this morning, the system has begun to begin to recover. Uh, pressure at the plant is close to 75 PSI, that's pounds per square inch, and around 55 million gallons per day. Uh, but the far reaches of the system are still not seeing uh, full pressure recovery. We've identified approximately 20 to 25 active leaks all over the city. Our crews, along with UCI, are still boots on the ground searching and repairing leaks. Our goal is to try to get pressure stable, uh, samples pulled and tested, and precautionary and the precautionary notice lifted by Saturday. Now, I will say that that is a bit of an ambitious goal, uh, but nonetheless, that is what we are focused on making happen at this time. A significant leak was found this morning on the well system uh, that was, uh, that once repaired should get that system re-pressurized. Once pressure is stable, we will do the required testing and hopefully be able to lift that precautionary notice by the week's end as well. Mr. Hennepin, who once again is our third party administrator, uh, has stressed to me that he believes that much of our recovery yesterday was due to people turning off their faucets from the active drip that many residents may have implemented uh, because of the cold temperatures uh, and the repaired breaks in their own homes and offices. We need to continue to conserve water where we can to accelerate the recovery process. We are still looking for the public to report leaks, open fire hydrants where they see them. This is very important. Once again, as I stated yesterday, we do not want any resident to assume that because there is an active leak running down their street that someone has already called and the city is aware. We would rather multiple calls for the same leak than no calls at all. As I stated yesterday, we would be looking for the availability of non-potable water. That is water that can be used uh, for those individuals who have no pressure and need to flush their commodes, uh, need to use it for you know, non-drinkable purposes. That is the non-potable water. We want to express our gratitude to the Commissioner of Agriculture, Commissioner Andy Gibson, and the State Fairgrounds. Uh, who took it upon himself to reach out to us and provide support. They will be offering water uh, non, for non-potable use at the fairgrounds each day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Non-potable water will be available at the state fairgrounds. You need to have your own containers for the non-potable water uh, and your own lid for that container. That is how you will be able to transport that water. Um, you'll need to enter the fairgrounds at gate one, which is located at the intersection of, of Mitt and Jefferson Street. They are not providing drinking or bottled water, only for flushing or purposes other than drinking. Once again, the non-potable water. And we thank Commissioner Gibson for his support and aid at this time. Water distribution, this is the bottled water. Water distribution will take place in West Jackson at 2 p.m. at the Metro Center, and this has already begun because we're past 2 p.m., at the Metro Center Mall near the Dillard's Loading Dock in South Jackson at 5 p.m. at Candlestick Plaza off of Cooper Road in Northwest Jackson at 5 p.m. at the corner of Northside Drive and Manhattan Road near Smilo Prep. Elderly and the disabled re and disabled residents who are unable to travel to distribution sites can call 311 and once again we will make accommodations to deliver water to them. That is reserved for both our elderly and our disabled residents. Uh, with that, that concludes the updates that I have for you. If you have any questions, I can take them at this time. There have been concerns about residents who claim they've been called the 311 system and haven't been able to get through or get a response. Have you had problems with people reaching 311? We have had some issues with that. Uh, we've had fluctuating staffing with that. Uh, we should be able to accommodate most of those calls at this time. Uh, but yes, we, we have had challenges and, and we will post uh, alternative numbers in the event, you know, what we have is a lot of the staff that helps with 311, you know, may also double with some of the people that help coordinate 
the water distribution efforts. And so that comes out of the same, uh, the same division, uh, but we are aware of that. Uh, we ask people's persistence. You can even reach out on social media uh, and let us know uh, if, if you're unable to get through. Yes, sir. Mr. Um, I cannot. Um, I would have to talk to the boots on ground to see why that is not a location today. Uh, it may be due to demand. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would ask for the opportunity for me to gather the information before I report anything inaccurate. Uh, but these at this time are the locations that are available. Um, and that's available to anyone who receives water off of our system. And so uh, we, don't, we do want to make it as convenient as possible to people. Um, and there may be a justification for why Byram is no longer on the list, but they are welcome to join the other locations uh, if, if need be. It, it comes out of constituent services, but it's often um, a result of the information provided by Public Works. Uh, for instance, in this, in this circumstance, while we have a citywide boil water notice, the entire city is not without water, right? And so every single uh, event that we have of this nature does not have the exact same response. Uh, in some regards, it, it may be that we need locations all over the city because the entire city is out of water. Um, in an event like this and others, there are certain locations that, that have a particularly uh, extensive need beyond the rest of our residents, and, and they coordinate around those needs. How many crews are currently working on repairs? And if it had talked about five contract crews, how many cities, how yes, many okay, city crews? Because yesterday I was at Spring Ridge, big six inch, eight inch combined bay that was open, and I checked back today, nobody's come out here to check back yet. Well, hopefully you reported that since you saw it. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's not assume that they knew. Uh, but there, there are five crews, as you mentioned, that are the contract crews. Uh, I, I would have to reach out to Mr. Hennepin to see exactly how many city crews, uh, because that can fluctuate based on some city crews being diverted to sewage issues, for instance. Uh, and so it's not the same number of crews each and every day. Uh, they kind of take their task orders and, and the workflow and, and adjust uh, to fit that. One of the challenges is, you know, even with those five crews, there weren't five crews actively working every moment because sometimes they were looking for the leaks. Um, the leak you're speaking of, I don't know the size of that leak and, and how significant. Sometimes they may judge a leak and say that, that we may have a, a more critical or extensive repair that needs to be made elsewhere and, and come back, you know, depending on how much they think it will impact the system. Coming here, then back. Well, both of those projects um, are nearing completion. Uh, the 48-inch line, uh, I, I believe, if, if I, it's not tied in, let's be clear, it's not tied in yet uh, to the system. Uh, but that one should be done relatively soon, um, within you know weeks to months, um, if not sooner. Uh, and the the uh, structure over the membrane side of the water treatment facility. Uh, there were some other parts to that project that needed to be accomplished, uh, but the structure is primarily built, uh, but they have to get heating mechanisms within the structure. They had an electrical challenge that they needed to do deal with. They had a drainage issue. Uh, now that there's a structure, when it rains, water falls somewhere, they don't want that water to then go to the electrical room uh, that, that can end up flooded based on what's taking place. So it's a lot of work uh, that is trying to tie up those loose ends uh, with that project. But both of those projects are nearing their completion. But since you brought that up, and I thank you for that, I don't want our residents to believe that those projects in and of themselves uh, will lead to you know, a more 
sustainable or resilient system, right? They, they will contribute towards it, but it won't reach us. We won't be able to drop a, a mission accomplished banner just with those projects. Uh, we still need to weatherize our chemical room, right? Uh, Mr. Hennepin talked about efforts that they had made to temporarily weatherize our, our chemical room, but, but we need a more sustainable uh, weatherization process there. Essentially, all components of the plant need to be weatherized, um, and then we need to find out how we better protect our pipes and our distribution system as well. Yes? I will share that a part of the uh, agreed order of consent uh, is, you know, having a coordinated strategy uh, in the event that that water um, distribution ceases. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Hennepin has been working aggressively, uh, you know, 100 miles per hour. Uh, but I believe that the event that, that we have just suffered under uh, was just too soon for that plan to be um, to be identified and, and implemented. And so I know that he's working aggressively to identify what is the best strategy. Uh, you know. We'd rather not go through these events. Uh, once again, this is one that, that no one could have avoided, right? Uh, when the weather, when the temperatures drop as low as they do, uh, when, we need, when we have the issues in our you know, hundreds of miles of pipe that we have, uh, then, then there's, there's no way in that span of time to deal with that. Uh, we look forward in the near future of being able to make significant capital investment uh, in terms of being able to handle not only the distribution systems, but other components. Uh, but each time, this is where I was going, each time we have one of these events, I think we learn from it. We learn more in our system. People ask me all the time, Mayor, you know, tell me when my water's coming back on. You know, tell me, you know, uh, an estimate of time. And, and I'm not trying to withhold information from them. Uh, the honest truth is, is that our system wasn't created in a way that we know how the water is flowing through each pipes. We've connected or we've, we've annexed parts of the city, South Jackson, uh, by example, uh, that wasn't, their infrastructure wasn't built by the city. It may have been built by the county years ago. We then connected it to Jackson's system. We added a new water treatment facility uh, from the original one we had in, in fuel. Now we have OB Curtis. And so that is why what Mr. Hennepin, when he told you about uh, the hydraulic model, what that hydraulic model accomplishes it gives us far more information about how water moves through our system. With that information, when we locate an area around the city that is suffering from water pressure issues, we can then better accommodate the fix and how we deal with that. All right. I'm sorry, and I will try to make this a routine uh, practice, and I failed to do this. I'm going to repeat your question. Uh, the question was, uh, you know, whether or not the plant withstood the, the weather uh, and that most issues were actually in the distribution system. Uh, I would think that it would be accurate, and I would leave a more complete answer for Mr. Hennepin. I believe that an accurate and honest answer is that the most significant challenges that we faced were in our distribution system. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. That is Mayor Lumumba just wrapping up an emergency update on the latest on the Jackson water crisis. The mayor said that crews have identified 20 to 25 water main breaks across the city, and there is also a significant leak on the city's well water system. He says that water pressure in the system is not at the level that they'd like to see it just yet. Uh, the mayor is calling for citizens to conserve water and report any leaks that they may see in their neighborhood. He said, don't leave it up to your neighbor to make that call when you see a leak in your area. The mayor is hopeful that the system leaks can be repaired and that water tests can be conducted in the coming days with the hope that the emergency boil water notice that the entire system is under can be lifted by Saturday, December 31st.
As for non-potable water for flushing, the mayor thanked Ag Commissioner Andy Gibson for making that non-drinkable water available for citizens. They can access that water daily from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the state fairgrounds, but the mayor says that you're going to need your own container and lid to transport that water home. Stay with 16 WAPT News. We will have more on the ongoing water crisis and more from the mayor's update coming up at 4, 5, and 6. We'll see you then.